everyone. I'm Apostle Dr. Leanne Marino, and welcome to the Word of Power brought to you by Apostolic Fellowship International Ministries. Today I'm answering the question, do Christians have to observe the Sabbath? Recently, I saw more than one discussion about the Sabbath on the Internet and whether or not Christians are required to observe the Sabbath. I think that what struck me most about one of these dialogues in particular is that the complete and total unwillingness people have to discuss this issue for some reason like mature human beings. Both sides of the debate became so immersed in the battle to be right and to prove their own perspective and make everyone hear what they have to say on the issue. Somewhere in there the issue became a right fight rather than a dialogue over what is true according to the scriptures. For some reason the question of Sabbath observance among Christians is a hot button issue for people on all sides of the debate. We must be careful, however, that in the midst of this debate, we don't lose sight of the issue and discerning it for Christians in light of the Word of God and the New Covenant. I think there is renewed issue in the question of Sabbath observance and other aspects of the law for this that matter in response to the Hebrew Roots Movement, which is currently going through an upsurge over the past few years. I believe that while seekers of this movement are genuine and often serious in their scriptural pursuits, in an attempt to revive something ancient, they are actually reimposing the law on believers. We are finding yet another attempt to Judaize the Christians. As we know from the book of Acts, the Judaizer movement, which argued one cannot be a Christian without first being a Jew, was shut down theologically and scripturally by the Apostle Paul. If we look at the movement in this light, we can see that while the motives of the movement may not be necessarily bad, the movement in and of itself is in great theological error. That having been said, good or bad, the Hebrew Roots Movement is causing many to re-examine the issue of Sabbath observance. One of the main staples of this movement is the Sabbath, requiring individuals to follow the letter of the law, observing the Sabbath from Friday night at sundown to Saturday night at sundown. The question thus becomes, what is the answer for Christians on the matter of Sabbath observance? For that, let's go to Colossians 2. I want you to know how much I am struggling for you and for those at Laodicea and for all who have not met me personally. My purpose is that they may be encouraged in heart and united in love, so that they may have the full riches of complete understanding in order that they may know the mystery of God, namely Christ, in whom are hidden all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. I tell you this so that no one may deceive you by fine-sounding arguments. For though I am absent from you in body, I am present with you in spirit and delight to see how orderly you are and how firm your faith in Christ is. So then, just as you receive Christ Jesus as Lord, continue to live in him, rooted and built up in him, strengthened in the faith as you were taught and overflowing with thankfulness. See to it that no one takes you captive through hollow and deceptive philosophy, which depends on human tradition and the basic principles of this world rather than on Christ. For in Christ all the fullness of the deity lives in bodily form, and you have been given fullness in Christ, who is the head over every power and authority. In him you were also circumcised in the putting off of your sinful nature, not with a circumcision done by the hands of men, but with the circumcision done by Christ, having been buried with him in baptism and raised with him through your faith in the power of God, who raised him from the dead. When you were dead in your sins and in the uncircumcision of your sinful nature, God made you alive with Christ. He forgave us all our sins, having canceled the written code with its regulations that was against us and that stood opposed to us. He took it away, nailing it to the cross. And having disarmed the powers and authorities, he made a public spectacle of them, triumphing over them by the cross. Therefore, do not let anyone judge you by what you eat or drink or with regard to a religious festival, a new moon celebration, or a Sabbath day. These are a shadow of the things that were to come. The reality, however, is found in Christ. Do not let anyone who delights in false humility and the worship of angels disqualify you for the prize. Such a person goes into great detail about what he has seen and his unspiritual mind puffs him up with idle notions. He has lost connection with the head from whom the whole body, supported and held together by its ligaments and sinews, grows as God causes it to grow. 
Since you die with Christ to the basic principles of this world, why, as though you still belong to it, do you submit to its rules? Do not handle, do not taste, do not touch. These are all destined to perish with use because they are based on human commands and teachings. Such regulations indeed have an appearance of wisdom with their self-imposed worship, their false humility, and their harsh treatment of the body, but they lack any value in restraining sensual indulgence. What do we see here? The full mystery of God is in Christ, and in Him are the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. Christ is not a type or shadow, but is a reality. If we are to have the full riches of complete understanding, we must find them in Christ. Let us be rooted in Christ, living in Him, built up in our faith, knowing what we have been taught in the Scriptures and overflowing at all times with thankfulness. We are not to be deceived by arguments that sound good but are not. The hollowness of deceptive and empty thoughts of men can be found in religion just as much as they can be found anywhere else. In fullness of Christ lives the very image of the invisible God, and we have been given fullness in Him because He is over all. Through him we have been circumcised, not of the flesh, but of the sinful nature. Therefore, the physical circumcision of the flesh is a type or a shadow of the work to be done in Christ. And we do not need the physical action to complete the reality that is done in him. And that is very important because that was a part of the law, and now we get into other aspects of the law. On the Christ... On the cross, Christ canceled the written code or law. It is no more. And those who are in Christ are not bound by it, as we live by grace in faith through him. Therefore, we are not to be judged by what we eat, what we drink, observances of religious festivals, seasonal observances, or observances of the Sabbath. Why? Because the Sabbath, along with the festivals, are shadows of Christ to come. They pointed to the reality of what we were to find in Him, but are not Him, and the reality is in Him. People who delight in outward religious observances are puffed up. Do not be led astray by such. All things based on human commands and teachings will pass away, while they do hold to some appearance of wisdom or do seem to lead somewhere. Such adherences and legalism actually lead nowhere. To put such faith and mandate others to observe such things is a false humility, a self-imposed worship, and a harsh treatment of the body. The scriptures here clearly indicate to us that the Sabbath is a part of the written code which was destroyed by Christ on the cross. It further, however, indicates that as are all the feasts of the Old Testament, a shadow of Christ. Let us think of what a shadow is. If I am outside walking and it is sunny, the sun hits my body and it casts a shadow. Now that shadow is not me. It points to the fact that I am there, that I am a reality. But if someone were to see my shadow, they would not say they saw me, but that they saw my shadow. So if the shadow is not the real being, it is not the reality of who the person is, then this means that it in and of itself is not a reality. The scriptures go on to tell us that the Sabbath is a shadow of Christ. It is not a reality of him. But for all the years until Christ was born, it let people know a Savior would come and they could find rest in him. For those years, the people needed the shadow. They needed the reminder. But the reality has now come in Christ, and we do not need that reminder, as Christ is with us and is real today. It is important to note that in speaking of various legalisms people seek to impose today, such as the Sabbath, that we are warned against following empty and deceptive thoughts, however they may come, but especially in the context of religion. We are not saved by observing the Sabbath or by not observing the Sabbath. We are not saved by what we eat or drink. We are saved because of Christ. The sooner we are able to realize this, we can live in the freedom God has for us under the covenant of grace. Thank you very much for joining me on the Word of Power today. Do you have comments, maybe a question that you'd like to see answered here? Send it along to me at letters at powerfortoday.org. And be sure to visit my website at www.powerfortoday.org for more information about Apostolic Fellowship International Ministries and the work that we're doing in Christ. Thank you very much for joining me, and until next time, be blessed.